Hey, we want to welcome you to our Wednesday night encouragement as we just take time out of our week, dive into God's word and build our faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God is what the word says. And so we want to build that faith tonight. I encourage you, if you have a copy of God's word there, maybe you have a notepad, you want to take some notes and use this throughout the week. I believe tonight's word will really help you as we dive into what does it mean to hear God's voice, or maybe to even know God's will for life. What does that look like when we're trying to search for God's will? How do we find God's will? How do we hear from the Lord? I think you'll really enjoy tonight's teaching. But before we get started, let's open up with a word of prayer. God, bless our time tonight, God. Use the word to encourage us, to direct us, maybe to clear our mind. God, open our heart just to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, this is probably one of the most often asked questions that I get as a pastor is how do I know the will of God? How do I know what God wants me to do in my life? Listen to what Paul writes in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. He says this, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. It says to allow our minds to be transformed. In other words, we don't think like the world thinks. We think a spirit-directed life. And it says, then we'll be able to know what God's will is. We test it and we can approve. Is, is this God's will for my life? Is good, pleasing, and perfect will? Now, I don't know about you. There have been many times in my life I thought, man, this is a really great idea. This seems like it's the will of God. And it just never panned out. It never, or I really felt like, man, this is God's will. And I started down that road and I was never seeing the fruit of following that until years later. Then I thought, oh, okay, I see the picture now. And sometimes that's how the will of God is. It's not instantaneous that we know it. We start on that journey. And as we get further down that road, then we begin to see. It's almost like uh, something comes into focus. Like if you're looking at something through a set of binoculars, and as you turn that knob, you're looking, looking, and then it comes into focus. The will of God is that way. And sometimes the lens is called time that as we go down the road, then we begin to see this big picture and we go, okay, I get it now. But I wanna take you to a portion of scripture in the book of Acts chapter 13. This is really where we see uh, Paul and Barnabas being launched out into ministry. And listen to what this scripture says in Acts chapter 13 and how we can make some application for our life just from these few Verses. This is what it says in Acts 13, verses 1 through 3. It says, Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Manan, and Saul. So a very diverse group. I want you to think about this. Two were from Africa. One had a lot of wealth. And two were from Jerusalem. These are leaders in Antioch. Listen to what the scripture goes on to say. One day these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting. Now this almost goes back to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world, so our pattern has to change. So they weren't doing what the rest of the world was doing. Listen to what was happening here. It says, one day these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting. The Holy Spirit said, dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work I have for them. So after more fasting and prayer, so now they're going to test and approve it. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. You see, it was prayer and fasting that actually opened up their mind to hear from the Holy Spirit to say, hey, this is what I want Paul and Barnabas to do. Uh, they changed the way they were doing things. They, they said, I'm going to spend time in prayer and fasting. We're going to spend time in prayer and fasting as we do. As we, uh, as we embrace the presence of the Lord, then we know the Lord will speak to us. And I, and I love how it says, and the Holy Spirit spoke to them. And then they went back and they fasted and prayed again. They said, Lord, is this really you speaking to me? They tested and approved what God's will was, his good, pleasing and perfect will. So, you know, I was thinking about this. How do we hear God's voice? How do we position? You know, we've been talking about this on Sunday morning 
about alignment. Um, you, you know, I compare it to a tuner on a radio. I've compared it this way of knowing God's will. The Bible says, who is in ear, let him hear. So it's not a matter if God is speaking. It's a matter, are we really listening or have we tuned in to what God is saying? And there are some things that we can do in our life that we can tune in to hear. It's like an old radio tuner, how you had to turn the knob. I find it very interesting. My son's only 13 years old, but he has an old radio, the old tuner style. And even last night, he was in his room tuning the radio and listening to a college basketball game on a traditional old style radio. And he was sitting there tuning it, just trying to get it perfect and listening to it in his room. It sort of reminded me of when I was a kid doing the same thing. But he wanted to get that signal just right. Well, there are things that we can do in our life that allow us to hear more clearly what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because you've got all these competing voices. The world in which we live, there's this voice saying this and this voice saying that. And I'm not saying they're all bad. There may be some good people in your life that are encouraging you, but nothing will ever supersede the voice of God. Nothing will ever uh, become more primary than the voice of the Holy Spirit. So what are some things that we can do to align our lives that we would know, hey, God, this is you. I can test and approve it this way, that we accept it. How do you hear from God? This is the first thing I would tell you. First of all, create some margins for your life. In other words, create some space. Uh, Paul and Barnabas and the rest of the believers, what did they do? They dedicated themselves to fasting and prayer. In other words, they created some margins for their life. Psalm 46 and 10 says this. It's one of my favorite uh, chapters in the Bible. It starts off uh, by, by saying that, it, uh, you know, that, uh, that he's with us in times of trouble. But verse 10 says this, Be still and know that I am God. You know, there's times where we just need to still and quiet ourselves to hear what God is saying. We create margins instead of being in a rush and then giving God the last five minutes of our night or the first five minutes of our day, that we give him a little bit more time where he can speak. You know, conversation, the best conversation sometimes is not a quick hi and bye. That, that's sometimes not the best conversation. Some of the best conversations that Christy and I have at night is when we lay down and we just begin to talk in bed and pretty soon an hour has gone by. We created a margin to hear from one another. The same thing with God, that we're going to create margins. Now, when I think about busyness, all of us are busy. I'm busy. You're busy. There are things that are competing for our time, but no one was as busy as Jesus. I mean, can you imagine how, be, how many people wanted Jesus around? But listen to what the Bible says in Mark 135. Listen to what it says. It says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and he went off to a solitary place where he prayed. He created margins. He said, you know what? I'm going to get up early before everyone else is competing for my time, and I'm going to give God the best part of my time. Day. Think about this, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who knows you by name, that knows everything about you, that saw you as you were being formed in your mother's womb, that Ephesians 2.10 said that before you were born, God created good works for you to do. If someone is that important in really sculpting your life, why wouldn't you want to hear from them? And that's creating margins. This is exactly what Jesus, the Son of God, even did to hear from the Father. Barely in the morning. He got up and he said, you know what? I'm going to create margin in my life to hear from what the Father is saying. Here's the second thing I would tell you. is not only create uh, margins, but set your heart on the default of yes. That I am set on yes. That Lord, whatever you call me to do, my heart is set on that default switch of yes. Lord, you asked me to do this. Yes. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 6 and 8, it says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. You know, if I was Isaiah, I probably would have asked questions like, Lord, where are you sending me? Do I need, what do I need to do to get ready? Uh, think about when Jesus even called the disciples. He said, Come and follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. He just asked him, he said, Come and follow me. 
and the men begin to follow him. You know, we want to, a lot of times we want to know, okay, God, if you're calling me to do this, please tell me how this is all going to pan out. Tell me what's going to happen a year from now. Well, that wouldn't require faith, would it? If we knew the whole story, we could really call, we, we really couldn't say that we're people of faith. People of faith are people who trust that God, I'm going to trust you. If we have to know everything that God has called us to do, then we're simply just not people of faith. All we're doing is responding to directions and we actually know the outcome. You see, there would be no trust then. It's trusting God that you're going to be with me. It's trusting God that you've got a great plan and I know that you wouldn't, you don't uh, have plans to harm me, but to bring me good. And so I trust you in this. And so we set our heart on, yes, think about this. If you grew up in a, in a good, stable family, I grew up in a good, stable family. Uh, I never questioned, was my dad going to do this or this or this? I just trusted him. If we were going somewhere, I didn't have to know uh, uh, 50 million things about where we were going. I just trusted him. You see, the same way with the Father is our heart set on, yes, so Lord, when you call me to do this, and it's our natural fleshly tendency to go, God, I need to know all the details. And God says, well, do you really trust me then? Trust is a matter of devotion that, God, I'm devoted to you. I trust you in this moment. And I'm just going to, I'm going to step out at your word. Yes, Lord. Remember what? Remember what Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come and I'll come. And, and Jesus said, it's me, come out on this water. And Peter came out on the water and he experienced the supernatural. We trusted him in this moment that we set our heart on the default on yes. When they said, set apart Saul and Barnabas for me for the work I've called them, they laid hands on them and they sent them out. They didn't ask a lot of questions. I'm sure that Saul... And Barnabas had a lot of questions, but they trusted the Lord anyway. So, so if we want to hear the voice of God, how do you hear the voice of God? Create some margins is the first thing I would tell you. Create some time. The second thing I would tell you is set your heart on yes. The third thing I would do this, and this is sort of what creating margins is all about, is listen for the voice of the Lord. In other words, it says in that scripture, the Holy Spirit said, you've tuned your ear, you've created margins, now listen. In other words, you know, the best listeners are the ones who are not talking. How about that? That's maybe the simplest way to put it, is that we spend so much time talking in prayer that we forget that there should be a pause where actually we listen because there should be a response. If we're praying, God, speak to me, God, speak to me, God, speak to me, but we're always speaking, we can't hear. I, I know that sounds so elementary in teaching, and yet it's so profound when we grab hold of that, that we just pause. So, so you know, it, even if you said, Pastor, I, I dedicate uh, 15 minutes every morning to praying. Well, how much time do you dedicate to listening? Because listening is just as important as making our petitions known, that we create that margin, that we set our heart on the default switch on yes. But if you never know what he's saying, how can you say yes to it? So there has to be this pause to where we listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. So during, while they were praying and fasting, there were moments where they had to pause and listen to what the Holy Spirit was saying. Listen to what John 10, 27, it says this, my sheep recognize my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I was talking with a friend who raised sheep. He was, on a, he was on a farm, and he said this. He said, sheep are not smart, and they're very stubborn. And yet, sheep have a herd mentality many times. And what happens is they follow the dominant ones. And so what happens is a shepherd, he was telling me, the shepherd spends a lot of time with those dominant ones because as they go, the other sheep will try to go with the dominant ones. It says right here, it says, my sheep recognize my voice and I know them and they follow me. It, out of all the competing voices in your life, do you recognize his voice? That when he speaks about a shepherd out, you go, okay, that voice is different. And I would tell you this, that many times 
God is not speaking what the world is speaking. He's many times speaking a word that really challenges us, that really causes us to trust him. And I think many times the reason we pray and pray and pray and we don't pause to listen is because deep down inside, maybe we're afraid of what he's going to say. We're so intent on God blessing our life that we're afraid that he's gonna say, I'm not gonna bless what you're praying for because it's outside of the will that I have for your life. And I think that's many times the reason that we don't pause because when we pause, that voice will come. And then we're responsible for that, you know, that we're gonna pause and we're gonna spend time. So, so the first thing is we're gonna create some margins, uh, that we're, we're gonna create some space there to hear from him. Um, that we're gonna set our heart on yes. That Lord, when you speak to me, like Paul and Barnabas, as soon as they spoke, they set them aside and they laid hands on them and set them apart for the work that God had called them. Uh, the third thing is that we're just gonna listen for the voice of God. We're gonna pause in our life and just be quiet. Just be quiet, listen to his voice. Are you hearing his voice? Are you he hearing the voices of so many others? Many times we wonder, don't we? We wonder, God, why is my spirit so troubled? Maybe it's the things we're listening to. Maybe it's the things we're entertaining. If you're spending all your time, social media and watching the news, of course your heart is going to be disturbed. But if you'll pause and just say, God, I wanna spend time in your presence. I, I wanna spend time um, hearing from you, Lord, speak to me. Because if you pray, Lord, speak to me, don't you believe that God will answer? If you believe that he will answer, then quiet yourself before him. Here's the fourth thing I would tell you. Not only those three things, but the fourth thing is that you confirm God's direction in community. In other words, there should be some people around you that you trust, that when the Lord speaks to you, this is, think what happened with Paul and Barnabas. As soon as they heard, they talked about it and said, this, this seems good. This seems like what the Holy Spirit is doing. They confirmed it in community, people of like faith. When the Lord speaks to you, let me just say this. When the Lord speaks to you and you know that this is the Lord, don't go to someone who you know is immature in the faith, someone that doesn't have your best interest in mind, someone that you deep down inside might try to talk you out of, don't go talk to that person. Go talk to the person that's actually gonna put more wood on the fire. Go talk to a person that is not gonna tell you what you wanna hear, but they're gonna tell you what you need to hear, a trusted voice. The Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, so one brother strengthens another. That we need those people in our life. That, you know, it, 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 even here, Paul Martin, they confirmed it with that group of men. Don't do life by yourself. It, validate God's word in the community of believers, people that you trust. And you can test it. Listen, you can not only test it with, with those people in your community, but does it, ask yourself a couple questions. Does it line up with the word of God? That what God's saying, does it line up with his word? Is it consistent with how God's made you? All right, God, God has a work for you and, you, and you're discovering that work for, is it consistent with that? And what he's calling you to do, is it redemptive in nature? Is it going to help people? Is it going to bless his kingdom? See, you can ask those three things in the context of a community of believers as well. And here's the last thing. Here's the last thing. As we just talk about those things, creating margin, okay, that you're going to set your heart on yes, that you're going to pause and listen to the Lord, that you are going to confirm God's direction and community. Here's the last thing I would tell you. Take a risk. Take a risk. I, even when I say that, some of you, your response said to me, though, that sounds pretty risky. Yes, it does. That you're going to take a risk and say, God, I'm going to take you at your word. Remember, God is supernatural and we live in a natural environment. When God calls us to things, he's calling you to do things, not in your own strength. It's actually going to require his strength. I, I said this before. 
the things that God calls us to do, all right? No matter how much talent you have, no matter how much wealth you have, no matter how much influence you have, you are incapable of doing what God called you to do apart from his power. It's impossible. God doesn't call you to do things that you can do on your own. God calls you to do things and he says, let's partner together to do it. That's what God calls us to do, but it requires a risk. I'll never forget years ago, many, many years ago, uh, I was right out of uh, college and I was at my first uh, ministry opportunity uh, in uh, North Carolina. And a friend came, a friend came to me and he said, hey, listen, he was another youth pastor. He said, I've got an opportunity that is amazing for you to get into a business opportunity. And, uh, you know, it's going to require a little bit of capital. And of course, I was right out of college and, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking a little bit of capital and I'm thinking the $20 count, you know, because I, I really don't have anything. And uh, it, it was a couple thousand dollars and I probably could have gotten it at the time. Um, but it, it was to go into this business and he explained what it was. And, and to be honest with you, I've never, uh, if, if God's provided a, a way for me to live and have an income, uh, and I don't have to take another job, then I, I never have. Uh, I just, I want to give everything I can to all my energy to full-time ministry uh, if, if the Lord makes a way for that. And so I've, I've never tried to dilute what God's called me to do if, he, if he's allowed me to do this full-time. Um, and I didn't want there to be competing voices, in other words. And so I, I said no. Uh, I, I'm not going to do that. And, and to be honest with you, it was a little risky. Uh, years later, many years later, five, ten years later, uh, the, the company became very, very big and made a lot of money. Now, do I regret that? No. But the, the, the point is this. It required a risk even when I couldn't see the outcome. The outcome was very wonderful uh, for my friend, um, but it required a risk at the time. You know, the kingdom of heaven is that way. Uh, when God asks us to do something, he doesn't paint the whole picture and said, hey, doesn't this look good? Now jump on. Once again, that would require no faith. It actually takes a risk for us to do this. And, and so many times we're waiting, God, when, the conditions just aren't right. My family's not where it should be, or uh, I don't have my finances in order. I don't, I, and we can make a, a million excuses not to do the will of God when he speaks to us. But I love what Ecclesiastes says, 11.4. It says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. If you're just waiting for those perfect conditions, then it really wouldn't be faith, would it? You see, God is speaking. He was an ear, let him hear. We just make it difficult, don't we? We allow all these voices to come into our life and all these situations, and then we say, well, God, it's just too big. I, I can't do this. I can't be called away from this. And we make excuses why we can't live the life that God created us to live. Because actually that is the will of God. That he's designed us, he's created us for a specific purpose, and he says, I want you to walk in it. And there's so many things that we can do to hear the will of God. Uh, but I, I've just given you five tonight. And I would tell you this, create some margins. Set your heart on the fault. Take time to listen. Put people in your life that will encourage the will of God and then take a risk. Take God at his word. And I promise you, your life will never be the same. I think about Peter when he took that risk and he got out of the boat and he walked on water. You know what? Here's the reality. Only Peter could say that he walked on water. And I believe this. I've said this before. I believe that if all the disciples would have gotten out of the boat, they all would have walked on the water. And yet Peter did. Don't be the person who sits back in the boat and say, man, I wish I would have done that. Take a risk. Take God at his word. And I promise you, he's not calling you to fail. But you've got to position yourself to hear the will of God. I want to pray for you now. And you know, whatever you're asking of God, uh, the Bible says to ask in accordance with his will. You know, what you're even you're asking, does it line up with God's word? Remember this, if you're asking for something that's outside of the will of God, he's under no obligation to answer that. I mean, why would he bless a life 
that doesn't even line up with his word. So as we line our lives up with his word and we begin to ask in accordance with his will, he's going to speak to us. Listen to what he has to say and then do it. So Lord, I pray for my friends who have joined me tonight, God. God, even myself, even as I speak this word, God, I feel like I'm being encouraged by the Holy Spirit to just listen more intently, especially in the days in which we live right now, God. Would you, um, would you tune our ear to hear the Holy Spirit like never before? We're living in some uncertain times, but God, that doesn't mean that you're uncertain. It doesn't mean your kingdom is shaken. Your kingdom's very much still intact and still moving forward. God, may we hear your voice clearly that we're going to pause and take some time, create margins, put people around our life that will encourage the will of God for us. And that God, in the end, that we would just take a risk, jump off that diving board, learn to swim, to take a risk, God. And God, when we do that, we begin to experience that abundant life that Jesus talks about. Because God, I know everyone listening right now wants that life. God, those things come by listening and then doing. So help us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'm so glad that you joined me tonight for a few moments. Hope this word encouraged you. Listen, if we can help you anyway, don't forget to log on to our website, clconline.org. If you need to have a prayer request or you want us to reach out and contact you and pray with you, you can find all that information right there on the website. I'm praying for you that you're going to have a great week. I always like to say this. This is just not a phrase that I saw somewhere. I believe this for my life. I've experienced this for my life. If you are serving the Lord and you're following with everything that you have, I believe this 100%. The best is yet to come for you. God bless you. Have a great week.